Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to one of the final battles from the B-Pool and from the tournament as a whole. This is going to be Austria-Hungary versus Japan. If Austria-Hungary can win this one, that's going to determine who is going to fight the British. The British have moved on from the group stage to the final stage. But are they going to fight the Austro-Hungarians or the Chinese? This battle is going to decide that. So let's see how it unfolds. This tournament is currently sponsored by The Block Zone. You can see them here. The winner is going to get this 1 in 200 scale. It's a big one. Uh, Bismarck. The Bismarck is going to be taking up 1.25 meters in your living room once you have all 7,164 pieces complete. Um, if you want to get a project from The Block Zone, they have a lot of them. Um, they got military gear. I've recently actually made this car uh, with Quinn. I'll, I'll add a clip. And um, they got all sorts of different gear. You can go for cars, um, you can go for military vehicles, which you might find yourself interested in, ranging from anything like a Ferdinand, uh, a bridge layer, Abrams. Uh, we got a uh, missile carrier tank. This seems to be something out of a, an odd contraption game. Um, they got many, many projects. And yes, these projects are not necessarily cheap. But if you use code STEALTH upon checkout or use my link down below in the description, you're going to be getting a 10% off and you directly support the channel. Big thank you to the Block Zone for sponsoring the tournament and providing that Bismarck to the eventual winner. But we're not there yet. First, we have a couple of battles to do. Join me for the next one. The fire hoses immediately open up. Kaiser Max, Gorchkowski, and Elizabeth Petsnag with their 12 inchers and don't discount the torpedo launchers. 15 18 inch torpedo launchers. Though sadly, we've I think rarely seen those used this tournament. Immediately they open up, but with armor piercing. Now, armor piercing against these Japanese ships is I think an excellent idea. You don't need to burn them down right from the get-go because the Japanese ships have really bad armor. I believe they have 0.7 inches of armor, something to that effect. Their deck armor is really, really susceptible to shells. And this does mean that this plunging fire by the Austro-Hungarians can actually cause a lot of damage if they're hitting. And I'm not even sure who those shells were meant for. Yeah, the middle ship. Uh, but the spread was so serious <laughs> that even the trailing ship took a bit of damage. Causing even on them a bit of damage and stability. Look at that. Parcel pen. Damage to the main gun. Fire. I'd love it if the Japanese ships would take the kicking that the Japanese... That's right, that the Austro-Hungarians are dishing out. Take it. And then give back with those 18 inches. But I've seen the Austro-Hungarians fight enough times... That I am somewhat hesitant. Now the pet snack did take a hit. Potentially from an 18. No, a couple 13s. The 18s haven't hit anything yet. The pet snack is suffering. She's down to 87% structural integrity. Uh, all Austro-Hungarian ships seem to be turning a bit. Losing out on potential DPS there. That's a serious hit. That was an 18-inch hit. Flooding on four compartments. From the rudder to under the X turret. Be bad news. So far, the Japanese haven't taken a whole lot of damage yet. We're looking at 3.4k damage taken by the Austro-Hungarians. 1,900 done by the Austro-Hungarians. That's a lot of incoming shells. Can you guys handle that? What range are we currently fighting at? 18 half. Look at how vulnerable the Austro-Hungarian ships are by comparison. Bow, stern, deck, superstructure, turrets, everything goes on the Austro-Hungarian ships. I don't think the Japanese have quite the same damage profile or the same vulnerability profile. Yet, the closer they get, the less vulnerable they become. Because at that range, their deck armor won't be a problem. These shells, yeah, they're pretty quick. 
Ooh. I think the Elizabeth Petsnack is not going to be with us for much longer. Her speed is dwindling. With that level of flooding, she can only do 27 knots. Which is still pretty respectable, considering her damage. By the way, it's another ship that's taken damage since listing to starboard. In follow-up to a previous video, where I said ships that take damage seem to be listing to starboard after pointing... After somebody pointing that out to me in the comments. I started looking for it and went, huh. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Austro Hungarians. When are you guys going to switch to high explosive? 15 kilometers. You got the high explosive range. Unless the Austro Hungarians are trying to outshoot the Japanese ships, but I rather doubt that. Once these things turn on their fire hose mode, high explosive spam, it's. Well, it's not necessarily GG for the Japanese. But. Oof. It's not necessarily GG for the Japanese, but it'll start to go downhill for the Japanese pretty quickly. We're pretty even on damage for now. It's 4k damage done by the Austro-Hungarians. 5.5k done by the Japanese. And I think that the numbers are going to skew faster in favor of the Japanese because they have those 18 inches. The 12 inches are pretty consistent, doing about... 400, uh, sorry, 122, 42, 75. But if you land a hit with an 18 inch, you can do 2.5k damage in one shot. Ricochet, ricochet, ricochet. Could have been a lot worse. Uh oh. You guys switched? Yep, they switched. We have the Kaiser Max and the Gorshkowski uh, and the Petsnack herself all firing high explosive now. Seemingly main tower. <laughs> yeah. As I was saying, um, once these things turn on to fire hose, it's. Well. It's that, really. And they can do it again. And, well, rather, they will do it again. Causing. Eight fires in one salvo. And I thought that World of Warships was bad. That's another six fires. Japanese damage control parties are good. But not this good. It's another seven fires. Now they might put out three or four fires by the time the next volley arrives. But they cannot keep that up. That's another five. And this ship is more burning than recognizable at this point. Damage done. 11k. All of a sudden, the Austro-Hungarians are making a massive comeback. we got 11 kilometer range, so they're still not inside the torpedo range. Incoming torpedo from the Japanese, immediately detected by the sonars from the Kaiser Max. And the ships turn around quickly. They can take a torpedo. they got anti-torp 5. They're very well protected. But these are 24-inch torpedoes. And you might have up to 40 to 60% damage reduction. But that is still a lot of damage that you will take. Look at the Kaiser Max go around. I rarely see them turn into torpedoes. Hmm. No, they're fine. They're fine. Unless somebody else also launches torpedoes. In which case, this could be a bit more of a difficult issue for the Japanese... Oh, sorry, for the Austro-Hungarians to deal with. And you can see that the Austro-Hungarians are turning their ships so much that the turrets were struggling to lay down fire onto the Japanese ships, buying the Japanese some time to deal with all the fires. So for a minute, the Japanese are, well, safer... And the moment that these things start firing up again, the Japanese ships start burning again. Come on, if you shoot back with all your torpedo launchers, you're going to flood these things very quickly. Speaking of flooding, the Petsnack is having a bad day, surviving on 3% of her original buoyancy. Jesus. She's still trying to fight. 
but with that much flooding, well, you might be able to bring your guns to bear directly forward. I think that'll be the extent of it. Battlecruiser Kita. Having done 4.8k damage. Badly burning. The other one's the Nishin. Five fire set here. 28% crew lost. 83% control of the ship. Oh, this is going to snowball. But they might take down the pet's neck before they go. Come on. I want these guys to have the torpedoes go off against the Japanese. Because that will give the Japanese a run for their money. No anti-torpedo protection. Oh, speaking of. Volley, volley, volley. That was both sides from the pet's neck. Nishin knows about the torpedoes and should be safe. As she's maneuvering around, I don't recommend that the rest of the Austro-Hungarian ships launch their torpedoes because they will simply not land them. There's another stray over there. There's a, a big school of torpedoes passing through there. Kita has been given a breather, allowing her to recover. It's a bit incredulous how these torpedo launchers on the Austro-Hungarian ships managed to survive. Because most of the time on the other ships they just get knocked off. Did this thing just launch a torpedo? Yeah, it did. Nishin launched her torpedoes, immediately detected by the sonar on the Kaiser. The Kaiser returns the favor with these fast torps, 65 knots. It's going to close the distance very, very quickly. Yep. She just launched. Finally, a torpedo knife fight. Another salvo of torpedoes from Nishin. Kaiser Max, badly, badly bruised. The Elizabeth is still back here. I'm not sure why they're allowing her to survive. Nishin and Kita might collide as they're trying to evade this torpedo salvo. Look at that. Torps there, 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 here. Oh, there's another fan fire from the Kaiser Max. What the hell? Uh-oh. These are only 18-inch torpedoes, but there are a lot of them. It's two hits on the Kita, causing flooding on three, potentially four compartments. And she has more issues. She's steering directly into a wave of torpedoes. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hit. Hit. Dud. Hit. Structural integrity down to 0.2%. Buoyancy dropping by about 3% per second. And she's gone. Structural integrity took her down. That only leaves the Nishin. And the Austro-Hungarians still have a full health battle cruiser. They do have two very badly wounded ones. But I doubt that the Nishin is going to be able to take them down all by herself. She has no torpedoes to speak of. Her bow launcher has been destroyed. Her side mounts are still functional. But as they get subjected to more and more high explosive spam. The question is how much longer will she have torpedo launchers. And this one is on the port side of the ship, so it's on the side that's actually taking fire right now. Oh, that was fast. Nishin immediately getting burned down by all three of the surviving Austro-Hungarian battlecruisers. So, no more Japan, unfortunately. At least not in this round. They did do some serious damage. 11k there, 2.5k there. Uh, the Austro-Hungarians, however, 18k, 12k... Yeah, that's a lot of damage. That's too much fire for the Austro sorry, for the Japanese to take. I'm honestly a bit sad to see the Japanese design go. Uh, this was my favorite contender. It was such a unique design that I was really hoping that it was going to go very far, but uh, not with this fire meta, which means Austria Hungary four wins. And with that, moves on to the finals, well, the semi-finals that is where um, they're going to be facing the second player, or the second uh, contester from Group A. Who is that going to be? 
Um, it's not decided yet. It's not decided yet. It could be the US. It's likely going to be the US. And um, it's going to get decided very soon in Italy versus the US. Although, well, not really. Um, Italy only has one win. The United States already has two. So, considering that Germany is already done playing, it's basically going to be the US. Anyway, first up is going to be Italy versus the US as the part of the last part of the final stage from the A group. Um, the final from the B group is going to be Russia versus Spain. The Spain um, ships, much like the Austro-Hungarians, burn-wise. Austria-Hungary does take the cake with that. They are doing a little better. Uh, the Russians, so far, uh, no wins. But they might be able to salvage some of their honor if they beat Spain. So, some interesting battles coming up. I hope you'll join me for that. And after that, the finale series. So, let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I'll see you soon for more battles.